today on the American Truck Podcast. Splatoon 2 is getting a demo. Steam Green Light is dead. E3 is open to the public this year. And Battlefield 1 got a big update. Hello and welcome to the American Truck Podcast with Andrew C. And Jefferson B. Night, Dr. Person. And Freelance Gamer. Mm, the good Night Doctor Freelance Gamer combo. It's been, we haven't had both of you in a while. Yeah, this is, I think this is uh, this is the first of 2017, isn't it? I don't know about that far, but it's, it's definitely been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. And actually, I was tempted to not come into this today. Mm, can't do it too. You'll weeks be in hearing. A while. Well, yeah, I know you'll be hearing very little from me because am am sick, so we'll be muted most of this. Oh, look, the way station bypass. We can now pass on our safe journey. I know, right? But we should just drive through it anyway, because it's deep. Okay, wow! This requires me driving on a semi-corrected course. Oh, jeez. Yeah, right? Yeah, just the key thing is just not to crash at the end, because that's... uh, Oh, yeah, it just jumps right out at you. Yeah. But, uh, so we got a little Switch news for you here today. Uh, Jeff's favorite game uh, is going to be doing a, a little, like, demo test thing in uh, the end of March. Uh, Jeff, what is your favorite game there on yeah, the Switch? Yeah, so, uh, so what I what I Andrew C. was referring to is uh, The Great Splatoon, uh, which is Nintendo's uh, wonderful little foray into the first-person shooter. Uh, or I guess it's a, it's a third-person over-the-shoulder shooter, depending on your perspective. Um, made great great waves with the Wii U, and we will be seeing Splatoon 2 coming to the Wii U, or as I like to refer to it, Splatoon. Huh? Huh? Anybody? Anybody? Splatoon just me? is what I call it. Oh, okay. Um, I, maybe it's just me then. Splat. So, but anyway, so they're, they're running a tech demo, and that's going to occur on the 24th to 26th of March. If you happen to be one of those people who have a Switch by that point in time, yeah. more Another power one. to you. You got about a month uh, to get one. Mine, I probably won't get till June, just because of back orders. I have <laughs> almost every email list letting me know, and even Amazon is out of stock until further notice. Yeah. So, uh, we'll see about that. But we've got right now uh, the four main weapons, the, the kind of the big four that they're debuting with Splat, Splatoon, uh, that we'll be seeing is uh, there's a a new dual pistol. There is a new heavy weapon. We're going to be seeing some more long-range weaponry. That was something that Splatoon 1 was uh, kind of lacking in. And then there's a fourth option. I want to say that's another uh, kind of a mid-range all-around. And uh, there are some really creative weapons. Uh, If you remember from the Nintendo press conference about the Switch, there were just some really great stuff. Um, We'll also be seeing some new modes. We'll be seeing a uh, spectator mode. So if you just want to kick back with your Switch tablet and prop it up using that built-in kickstand and watch some Splatoon play, go for it. Uh, and also we'll be seeing a local LAN support for uh, a total of 10 consoles, uh, which is a little bit unique in the sense that we were originally told that you were only going to be allowed eight console local link. Uh, but this is kind of an eight plus two module uh, where you'll be seeing eight player consoles and two spectator consoles. So if you happen to have you and 10 of your closest friends or nine of your closest friends and you don't want to be bothered to be over someone's shoulder, you could technically have a spectator console. And actually, I just realized why that's important now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, you could have a dedicated spectator, quote unquote, console that just uses the HDMI out to pipe to your display. Yeah, and uh, camera, and you basically have two glorified camera positions. Yeah, and then, I mean, you could just plug them both into a switch and just, you know, ready one, take one, ready two, take two. Exactly. You know, also, I, I like I, your, uh, your your un- unintentional uh, switch pun. Plug it into I? a switch. Oh. Or switch into a switch. Oh, oh, mm. oh man. There's yeah. a very, very slim pop portion of the population that got that point, got that reference. I I'm not in that. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Yeah, you barely but, got it. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm still holding out. I've been seeing some interesting critiques this week uh, just from some guys that I know on other chat channels uh, critiquing the Switch, but I am still over the moon excited, and I cannot wait for next month. It cannot get here fast enough, um, mostly because that means we can get another second production run, please. 
I would kind of hope Nintendo. they're already on their second Plays. and third production runs. It's just they haven't reached market yet. I, I, I just don't know, man. You I would just, think I, that I, I would they, hope. I, I don't know how how marketing works, like how, how product systems work, right. but I would like to think that I could put a reservation on the products being made now and they would just like release in April rather than releasing them all at once later. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you that's know, kind of I'm what not... Apple does. I think, you know, once a product's released, you know, it does kind of trickle out. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not a industrial engineer. I don't know how I'm not an industrial like logistics numbers guy. I don't know how don't that work works. I do not. I do not necessarily heart logistics. Um, Star but shit. you are I, also not hauling anything at the moment. So you clearly don't work for logistics either here. Also, also a very true statement, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, Splatoon 2, due to come out sometime this summer, they're, they're talking about July-ish, um, so that's when we'll get the full game experience, but this preview, uh, if you know any of your favorite Nintendo streaming YouTubers, give them a shout, because this is going to be a really interesting tech demo weekend. Indeed, indeed, quick. Wah! No! I, I, I was, I was like, ah, oh, I was like 10 seconds, man. Mm. Oh, that chain. is so lame. And now I'm at like 100%. And now F7. You're teleport. Enter. That's so lame. Uh, do you want to move on to the next news topic while I wallow here in chain mm, for a bit? Yes. Uh, something that is not lame. <coughs> Steam Greenlight is dead. It's dead. Rip, rip Steam. Steam uh, I was, was going to say, Steam, Greenlight's pretty lame. I, I have to agree with Kyle on this one. Greenlight was pretty lame. Yeah. Rip, like, rip that. good stuff came out of Greenlight. Greenlight as a system was not the And a lot of bad stuff came out of Greenlight, too. Fair. Very fair. A lot of bad stuff. So, uh, uh, Shower yeah, with your dad, dad simulator? I mean, it's, it's the uh, home of a lot of criticism over the Don't last you dare badmouth that game. Shower with your dad si simulator? That was, oh, amazingly, that was an amazing game. Bad enough that the cows come home. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, there's, so there's, there's a ton of criticism there, and um, mainly that... It is uh, good at producing a ton of lower quality games uh, that some people don't believe belong on the Steam store. Um, and so so it is kind of welcome to see that it's just dying, but it does bring with it um, kind of the rebirth of a, a new platform rather than Steam Greenlight you're gonna have now, Steam Direct, uh, where in developers will be able to uh, pay a fee and do some paperwork and they'll be able to put their games directly on Steam uh, which is is, is kind of like Greenlight but they're um, money based they're money based and chopping out the middleman of the people who you needed to coax so in other words your game. there's no need for anyone to like your game if right. you happen to be a developer with enough money and you think this game should be totally be put on there i.e. Shower with your dad simulator. If you have enough money from that game, or if you have enough money just backing it from yourself or, or you know, founders of some kind, there you go. The game's up. It can right. be bought. I, I am I am thoroughly there. curious with this uh, one one concern that I do raise with something like Steam Direct. It is uh, this this sort of undercuts that that uh, I am a game designer in like my early twenties. I have little to no funding market. So I'm wondering then, like, how is how is Valve going to cope with this? And I guess more importantly, like, what is this undisclosed fee that we're seeing? Mm. They're, uh, they're probably going to do the same thing they did with previous games. So a good example would be Super Meat Boy. Mm. Super Meat Boy was a Flash game, um, I believe, on Newgrounds um, for many for like for a very long time, and then um, it got enough popularity that um, he started making a full game out of it. And uh, and Steam was interested um, back in the day. Microsoft for the Xbox was interested for Xbox Live. Um, I, I think we're going kind of back to that, where you're going to yeah. have to rather than create content that you expect to make money off of day one, you're probably going to have to if you, if you're doing indie development like I myself might start doing eventually. Um, more likely than not, you're going to have to give the game away for free in some shape or some form or means. And then once it picks up some steam and some popularity, haha, you yeah. can actually get it on Steam, possibly without the fee. So we're we're looking at it almost like Steam is the end goal. Steam is not the process. 
Yeah, exactly. For some like, people, yeah. All of your fan base generation should probably take place before or outside of Steam, and then when you're ready to go to quote market, you're Valve, going to Steam. Yeah, Steam then becomes your market. Right. Right. Now there okay. are some things here. Um, so the fee for green light was about a hundred dollars. Um, there is some discussion about what that fee is going to be. It could be they kind of went to their developers to kind of feel out what the fee should be, and. At the preliminary state, we're somewhere between a hundred dollars and five thousand dollars, depending that's, that's, on that's who the suggestion came from. Yeah. You know, a big developer who spends millions of dollars on their games. It's like, yeah, five thousand. That's a well, great price point for this. Obviously, that's not going to work out for others. Um, so it, that is a thing that is going to happen. Uh, but I did see um, just a couple hours ago here, there is a publisher out there called Raw Fury who is offering f for um, indie developers to actually pay whatever that fee is for people at their discretion. So if you make a case to them for a game that they believe in, that they feel is going to do well, they will actually front that money for the developer and then they'll work out a scheme to get the money back in the future. Yeah, so you'll, you'll, you'll end up paying them a percentage of your profits. Um, a good thing to keep in mind with that is um, if you are selling a game on Steam, uh, for example, say you built a game in the Unreal Engine, you're paying Unreal, you're paying Steam, you're then paying this company. Right. right. So, so there's a lot yeah. of now. It almost players. sounds like though, like this is this is actually kind of exciting because this means the it's almost like an open casting call for a, a publishing company. A little bit. I mean, it is a bit like that with this this publisher here. They they are kind of welcoming developers in saying hey kind of come pitch us your game yeah. and we we'll, we might you know fund that that um insertion fee i guess you might yeah. call it yeah and that. i mean take it one step further you could see it as you know not only will we fund your you know your your listing fee if you will but uh, we might also help you out with marketing and promotion or you know get you in the hands of uh Help help you make some contacts with some uh, some really high profile reviewers like stuff stuff I think that could be really useful to the indie developer that previously wasn't accessible unless they were like this diamond in the rough on Greenlight. Right. So I hope that there are more like Raw Fury that are gonna come to market and with open arms kind of embrace that indie developer community and who knows maybe we'll maybe we'll see kind of some more collaborative game publishing at that point. Right. I, I am really, now. I am now. Really mild, cool. I'm now mildly tempted to start a freelance one, a freelance publishing company. Depending on how much money it is per publish, <laughs> Dude, <laughs> right? I would. I would so. Ba I would so invest in that company so fast. I would actually probably use the free. I'd probably use freelance or Ghost Inc. For it. Mm. Ghost Inc. Mm. Publishing. Uh, mm. A freelance media production. Motion oh, yeah. to hold the business meeting after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but Guys, that is a thing, uh, definitely to be looking at. Um, the changes aren't going to take place until sometime in the spring. Uh, so, uh, green light is not quite dead t today, um, but it will be dead in the spring, uh, and it will be replaced with uh, Steam Direct once all the final bits are worked out. Um, so, by summer sale, we should by be summer sale we should be switched games. over entirely to. Steam Direct. Gotcha. So, and we'll be able to then see what um, what happens with that. Yeah. Um, but in a bit of surprising news here, um, kind of came out here that uh, E3 was going to go straight open to the public this year. Uh, you would actually be able to buy tickets as a commoner with no industry affiliations and be able to just pay $250 to get the tickets. Now, I guess previously you could technically just be a member of insert media company's press team right and but apply. now it, i think you probably had i think you had to apply for passes okay uh, or for apply for the right to buy passes i don't, I don't know entirely how yeah. it worked you had to you, you had to go. you had to apply for the right to buy a pass and then you, you okay. or your company would buy the pass right so, so at least right now it's it's very above board like we've got now an officially like above the board way to allow the general public to kind of express their reactions exactly. i'm not sure that i'm in like I don't know how this is going to impact like the way in which the media covers E3 for the rest of the plebeians who can't actually get there. Right. 
like I can't I can't make it to LA. Like that's just something that's not really in my in my budget to you know want to go to E3. But I do still like I tune into every YouTuber's content involving E3 and all of the live streams and all the announcements, and that that works for me. I just hope that it doesn't get in the way with a bunch of and I use this term in the most endearing way possible, but I do not want E3 to be some sort of con. Right. I and I I, I, I cannot stress I, I, I mean this yeah. to, I mean this very endearingly, but I don't I want E3 to be the industry trade show where we see all the shinies. I don't want it to become something that is any less than that. Yeah, that's that's certainly a uh a fine stance. I mean, we do have a lot of cons. We have a lot of places like that that, that are uh, more geared towards the the fans and whatnot. And I mean, hopefully, they. I mean, the, the kind of barrier to entry here was the is the cost. I mean, yeah, two hundred fifty dollars isn't terrible, um, but it is. I mean, it is much more expensive than most of the most of the con prices. I think most of those are closer mm-hmm. to a hundred to one hundred fifty dollars for the three day. Yeah, I guess the big thing is... Go ahead. No, you were first. Oh, okay, I was going to say the big thing is this is also only 15,000 tickets. So hopefully that that kind of a limited pool might help curb the way in which we observe this. Uh, I know a couple people who used to go to to E3 for their um, uh, websites and blogs and different things. Um, And um, they they often would say that there's actually a decent amount of floor space. So I think what they're trying to do is capitalize that on that more. That and E3's been, uh, I don't know if this is true, but it seems like less and less successful in a way. In the past like a couple of years, it, it seems like it's losing some viewership because people are starting to smell the E3 BS. Um, like a good example would be, there's a lot of hype around a game when E3 comes out, right? And they, they show a tech demo of something, but then the game doesn't come out for like, four years when it's supposed to come out three years ago mm-hmm. and so like people are starting to get less interested in like the, the hype, hype trailers train. yeah yeah the hype train so is, I, uh, is I wonder if this is a response i think i'm wondering if this is a response to that because i mean the the, the the no man's sky uh i mean like i think i think there's a good there's a good example to be made of like hype train is starting to be a very negative thing right? yeah i i can see that i'm, I'm kind of curious also at the same time like because so many companies kind of are holding their own like event that happens to be located next to E3 and that might just be out of purely convenience so th- like, there's, there's nothing that's preventing Sony or Microsoft or Nintendo which I mean Nintendo goes off and does their own thing anyway from just hosting their own press events and releasing them to the internet world anyway so I, I can I can kind of see that where it's it's this whole idea of capitalizing on the available floor space that is still left right yeah, and I did see there was some people who um, made discussions about how, you know, like, um, EA doesn't do um, an event at E3 anymore, um, as well as a couple other um, publishers and developers aren't using E3 anymore, and th- that this could be one of those ways to get people back into um, onto the floor and everything. So, mm. certainly possible there. Who knows, um, maybe social media will be useful to make a, a big comeback, kind of doing that whole citizen journalism thing. Very possible. Very uh. possible indeed. Um, but, uh, let's see, uh, one, one last uh, big thing, and then we got a little piece after that. Uh, Battlefield 1 had its uh, winter update this week. Uh, that was about a 2 gig update. Uh, it brings a massive poop ton of bug fixes and uh, little game retunings of nerfs and buffs. Um, is that is that actually in the change log? Massive poop ton of bug fixes. Uh, no, it was about uh, probably a hundred lines of change here, change there, here, change there, change everywhere, change, change. Oh my! And um, that's one of those things. You, you're probably better off reading the patch notes than me just reading it to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, some of the highlights of it was uh, there is going to be a uh, rank cap change for classes. Uh, it's going to go from ten to fifty. Um, and there's going to be some new perks when you hit level 50, uh, as well as uh, the ability to uh, collect ribbons as you play, uh, designed to promote good team play and uh, playing the objective correctly, of course. Um, there's a bunch of other rank updates that are happening as well. 
uh, and some changes to the rent a server uh, model where uh, apparently you couldn't kick players from your own rented server that looks like a that sounds like a bit of a oversight but uh, good to see that it's been added now so there's like moderation features that have been added to the rent a server so um, a bunch of other things that happen too and uh, if you're you know super into battlefield you'll probably want to uh, check the patch notes for the complete list of everything and it was a good long long page of updates that happened in this um, big winter update but uh one last uh, little tidbit here uh we did find out right before we started uh recording that uh apparently the uh, american truck simulator has made it official new mexico is going to be the next expansion to the map uh no word on price no word on a date just that it's happening uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure it's going to be expensive. I'm sure I'm going to be sad and not buy it at first, and then I'll just give in at some point, unless it's really cheap. You know? My hope is that it's not just New Mexico as the DLC, and um, we can, in fact, get, like, maybe maybe they're going to bundle it in with a couple more states that we just don't know about yet. I, I just can't see myself paying more than, like, 250 for a state. Yeah, like, if it's a dollar, I'll be like, okay, yeah, you got me. Okay, yeah, I'll if it's a dollar, if it's, if it's four dollars. A dollar, a dollar ninety nine, yep, no problem. Yeah. Uh, uh, so, my argument for that, for, uh, for uh, against it being more than, like, two bucks, if you bought every state, you end up spending, like, over, like, if it's two dollars each, you're spending a hundred dollars outside of buying the game. Solid yeah. mathematical point. So, it's like, okay... I spent a hundred dollars on this. That's three expansions of WoW minus subscription. That's right. fifty. That's technically fifty expansions of American Truck Simulator, though. <laughs> I mean, say if, if no, 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 true. But like I'm saying, like, like if you're looking at like longevity of actual play to money spent, right? I don't know, uh, man. There's a lot of road going on here. I get. I, I, unless you can play I, I, that I'm, for six years, I'm trolling you, Kyle. Chill. I know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so the unfortunate like, part of it. Yeah. But like, it really if it's four dollars I mean, on that... each, you're spending two hundred. Yeah, I know. In the past, there was discussion on the expansions being some kind of like combinations, where it'd be you know, I did two it. to three, three to four maps um, or um, states per expansion. And that, I mean, that's where, you know, you go, okay, maybe five, six bucks, ten bucks max. But even for still, like, four or five you're, states, you're, sure, but you're, not you're starting to get to that point where even still, then, you know, three map uh, state bits are going to cost you a lot of money um, in the long term to get the whole country. Because you would assume their goal is to release the whole country. Although at this rate, it looks like we won't have the entire country until 2025. Mm hmm. You know, we're at, we're, it's like about, we've had three expansions, la well, three states last year, including the starter state, and then we're going to get one state here, at, hopefully by spring, if we get another one summer, another one by fall, we get three a year, it's going to take a long time. Maybe by then we'll start years. playing uh, ATS in VR? Yeah, right, Vir virtual know. American Truck Simulator. Yep. Um, but it's definitely right. something to look forward to, and uh, we will see what happens with there, and we will definitely keep you update on uh, any developments uh, with American Truck Simulator. Um, but uh, that is all we have for today. I hope you liked this episode of the American Truck Podcast. If you like it, make sure you hit that like button down below. Perhaps also leave a comment down below, and uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and we will see you guys in the next one.